Won't someone think of the children? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 games that ruin childhoods. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're ranking the worst licensed games based on children's IPs, which can include cartoons, live action films, or even comics. Number 10, Ghostbusters. Fly time. This 1984 comedy may have starred for chain-smoking degenerates, but it was a different time and Ghostbusters quickly found legions of fans both old and young alike. Released to coincide with the 2016 reboot, Activision's twin-stick shooter embodies the worst aspects of passionless and by-the-numbers licensed games. Focusing on four new characters, Ghostbusters asks players to slog through ten ugly and repetitive stages, while offering little in the way of variety or rewards. Stumble across a ghost, circle the specter and fire a beam in its general direction. Attacked by a bigger ghost, repeat the process, although with the added bonus of waiting even longer to capture the spirit. Rinse and repeat for six hours. Huh. Looks like they're still out there making supernatural herstory. Number 9, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Plus, if you don't, Easy. I believe the water will put out most of the flames. This is not how I pictured spending my evening. Some things are better left in the sewer. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows does a decent enough job of aping Batman, Arkham Asylum's combat system, and even adds a number of cool team-based attacks. But this hack and slash title is a buggy mess. The turtles randomly ignore commands, and there is no guarantee that the enemies necessary to complete a mission will actually spawn. Out of the Shadows is an especially frustrating experience because you can almost make out a decent game buried underneath all the trash. Number 8, The Wizard of Oz. Unlike its iconic namesake film, there is nothing wonderful about this video game adaptation. One of the many side-scrolling platformers published for the SNES, The Wizard of Oz boasts some charming visuals, but the pretty colors are hardly enough to distract from the wonky controls or the endless glitches. Moving at a glacial pace, The Wizard of Oz features four playable characters, but none of the options are particularly enjoyable to use. Dorothy frequently lacks the resources to deal with the overwhelming amount of enemies, and randomly falling through platforms is par for the course. Someone should have asked The Wizard for a game that's actually fun. Number 7, An American Tale. Yes, this thing exists. Why? I mean, who the hell knows? Published more than two decades after Don Bluth's animated classic, An American Tale is a platformer that feels more like a collection of half-baked minigames than a cohesive package. During one level, Bival steps into a bubble and pretends to be in the worst Super Monkey Ball level ever conceived. Fast forward a couple of missions and the adorable mouse is attempting to cross the street without getting trampled. A PlayStation 2 game that would have seemed dated on the console's predecessor, An American Tale should be erased from the history books. Number 6, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? The Nintendo Entertainment System perfected the art of licensed shovelware, and this adaptation might be the most disappointing of the bunch. Stepping into private investigator Eddie Valiant's shoes, the player spends the majority of Who Framed Roger Rabbit exploring buildings in search of four clues, leading to a boss fight against Judge Doom. While the game's premise is not offensive, the exploration is tedious and, more often than not, frustrating. The fight against Judge Doom is a mind-numbing slog that significantly ramps up the difficulty for no apparent reason. You want to know the kicker? Who Framed Roger Rabbit was developed by Rare. Number 5, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis. If Spider-Man 2 and Batman Arkham Asylum serve as examples of how to correctly adapt a superhero license, Aquaman Battle for Atlantis is the polar opposite. Yeah. 
Developed at a time when Aquaman was hardly the most beloved DC character in the business, this release quickly earned a reputation for being dead in the water. In addition to the torturous visuals and the nonsensical story, Battle for Atlantis manages to be the worst thing a game can possibly be. Boring. For approximately six hours, Aquaman swims around the seemingly abandoned Atlantis seeking goons to punch in the face. That is basically the entire campaign. Number 4. The Simpsons Wrestling Since the early 90s, Barton Company have starred in dozens of games, many of them less than stellar. But The Simpsons Wrestling raised the level of incompetence to unprecedented heights. Even though some of the cartoon's boundless wit survived the adaptation's process, The Simpsons Wrestling looks and plays like absolute garbage. Graphics aren't everything, but the choppy animation makes it seem like Springfield is in the middle of a seizure epidemic, while the beat-em-up combat has no sense of rhythm or even the tiniest hint of depth. The Simpsons Wrestling feels like a parody created by the cartoon itself to mock licensed games. Ow, yeah. Number 3. Back to the Future Remember that scene when Marty McFly slings pies at a never-ending army of Fonzies and Danny Zuko's? Apparently the NES does. Published a couple of months before Back to the Future Part 2 hit theaters, this movie licensed game possesses a touch more ambition than some of its contemporaries, but a handful of minigames provide only a brief respite from the monotonous main levels. Making matters even worse, Marty appears to be composed of glass, as the time traveler dies after just one hit, forcing the level to be restarted. Hey, at least the theme song never stops playing. There is no way that could ever get annoying. Number 2. Superman 64 This Nintendo 64 classic has attained a level of notoriety that few other games have been able to achieve. Describing something as one of the worst ever is often hyperbolic, but Superman 64 is the genuine article. Poorly optimized and glitchy enough to make Bethesda blush, Superman 64's hoop segments are the stuff of legend. But the terribleness extends to the indoor levels and the laughable multiplayer. The Man of Steel deserves better than a slapped together mess with no redeeming features such as this. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Number 1. E.T. the Extraterrestrial It's the video game that lets you pretend you're E.T. running away from secret agents. Licensed games tend to be rather forgettable, but only one example nearly dragged the entire industry into the gutter. Rushed out for the holiday season, E.T. the Extraterrestrial lacks any of the film's irresistible charm or whimsy. Now, in all fairness, worse games were released for the Atari 2600, but the company greatly overestimated E.T.'s commercial viability, resulting in millions of unsold cartridges and a literal mass burial. While not the only contributing factor, E.T.'s failure is considered to have played a huge part in 1983's video game Crash. That, boys and girls, is a childhood ruining game with a huge blast radius. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.